Well, COP is, uh, as we all know, is an important turning point. And uh, we see now more engagement of business than we've ever seen before. Uh, but it's not only engagement. Like I've said um, yesterday at one of the more important COP meetings, business is not only here to engage, business is also here to sort of demand. Because uh, in all fairness, there needs to be action taken now at all levels. And uh, I think it's going to happen. It's happening now that real action is taken. And if we see it, it is not only at the lower, but also at the higher governmental levels that people realize that this needs to be committed towards the future. Yes, well, business, first of all, needs to, of course, do things themselves. And what we have done at Marks & Spencer's is actually threefold. First, we started saving energy, about a third of our energy we saved. And after that, we started using 100% renewable energy. And therefore, being, I think, one of the forefront leaders there in operations. And se uh, thirdly, then, we started selling renewable energy to some of our customers. So 250,000 customers in the UK are now selling renewable en buying new en renewable energy with us. However, now it starts being uh, very much a collaborative field with other companies to just making sure that we get the scale of other companies joining the, the, the real drive for renewable energy. We believe that can only be done very strongly by engaging customers. And that is the next step. So the next step is now to engage millennials in this. Millennials need to be extremely involved. Millennials need to also put down, like I said, a demand like business does to come to renewable energies. That's why we started collectively with a number of other companies, something which is called collectively, and can click it on on, uh, on, on, your, on, your, on your iPad. But it is collectively is a new platform that actually allows millennials to be completely engaged on renewable energy. We actually start a campaign now, is We Got Power, and any millennial in the world, I think, needs to sign up to this pledge, because what it does, it actually changes the world in its entirety. In the UK or in Britain, the UK or in the US, you get your access to renewable energy if you're lucky. In lots of parts of the world, you don't, and we need to get engagement of the millennials to get that happening. If they start a, good, a strong pledge that they need to have that renewable energy very shortly now for their future, it's gonna work. RA100 is such a, what's a, what I call a logical development of all kinds of companies that already are doing much more of the right thing. And therefore that was, I think, a sign up that we saw with lots of companies that we already collaborate on, on lots of other s subjects like, you know, reducing wood fa food waste, um, work against deforestation. There are lots of projects that we work already with companies that are aligned in the RA100. But I think an important one is, is that now, uh, different to where you saw Copenhagen, you saw now the presence of those big initiatives of companies in, at the tables here in the COP21, and that makes a difference. So it's seen now, as, as I said, not only engagement, but really putting down their issues on the table towards governments that really change is needed and change needs to happen now. Well, the thing is, uh, you're asking me this question, whether what the future is of COP during COP, and we don't have seen the outcomes yet. And that's always a difficult one, because when it's broadcasted, you've probably seen outcomes. Uh, I'm encouraged by the energy, first, first of all, the first day at leadership of governments, there was real true energy. And I was here on Monday night, and I was here on Tuesday morning, and therefore saw that energy. I think it's all depending now on the negotiations that are happening over the next few days. But being informed by a number of the ministers uh, and being informed by some of the people that are at that table, there is clearly an intention to get to a real good conclusive and, I must say, binding uh, resolutions. So I have a positive view on that. If it would be too short, then I think it would be a very lost opportunity because this is absolutely momentum to get now to a real hardline future. Uh, and COP21 has at the moment the opportunity to get there. Never before there's been so much alignment between what I call high-end government, local governments and city governments, business, stakeholders in, in any form or shape around the world, the last part that I hope we get a bit more engagement on is what I call customers, consumers and uh, millennials. That last link will come over the next few months as well, but I think there's been more alignment now on that than ever before. So what it is, is, uh, is more engagement with each other. So the businesses that are not engaging yet need to far more get engaged with their sectors or with collective companies around the world to get, make this happen. 
Secondly, there needs to be a lot of best practices from larger companies going to SMEs, small and medium-sized enterprises. The next leg of the journey is to get in lots of those countries around the world, uh, people educated and helped how they can contribute here. Because don't forget, 70, 80, 90 percent of businesses in countries are not the bigger ones that you see here. These are small, medium enterprises that need help. And that help can only come through government and through a best practice learning from bigger organizations. Now, if these bigger organizations don't take the lead, they do take the lead now. They need to roll it down together with governments, together with SMEs. The second lag of it is the consumer engagement. I think consumer engagement will come over the time. It's always a bit harder to achieve, but it will come certainly.